Hello there, our company of heroes, and I'd like to thank each and every individual one of you who participated in the um, Easy AI Speedrun competition as posted on the subreddit. Um, this competition entailed trying to beat Easy AI in Annihilation with high resources in as quick a time as possible on one of the big seven one versus one maps and the response was incredibly good. I was really impressed by all of you and so much and so in fact it's motivated me to revitalize my uh, a company, a company Heroes YouTube series idea I had two years ago which was Rattenkrieg Challenge. This is the playlist from that. Um, this was the first episode of that. It was an all Jeep game featuring Jeep and I challenged people to try and, well Jeep challenged people rather to try and beat somebody in auto match using only Jeeps and raid as armor. And then you, we also did a Brit Demo Rush time trial, which I turned the winning contestants video into like a, a music video almost. It's a fly to the Valkyrie, so I'm really proud of that. You should go check it out. It's really funny. And that was just two episodes I did a while back. And because you're, you've been so enthusiastic, I'm going to do that again. What I'm going to show you now is one of the first replays I got because I want to show the evolution of the strategies throughout. So this is Tengen going as OKW against also a OKW in the south. Uh, Tengen bulletin wise he's got um, Rakettens have 3% 3 increased weapon reload so it would be really good if he had three of those bulletins. All he's got to do is de uh, destroy the command headquarters by the way so he's got one Rakettan now. It's currently one minute into the game I'm doing this at times too, by the way. Don't want to be too. He's destroying these walls so he can get more in there. The Easy AI Stormtroopers are, um, Stern Pioneers rather, are capping there. So they're out of the way, that's good. Raketten can go pretty much straight in. The flak emplacement's nowhere near him. He can just pretty much wail on this thing. He can use his Stern Pioneers to push the opponent's Stern Pioneers away. The second Raketten's coming to the picture. The first one's already there. The third one's now. Him in out of base, the building's nearly down to half already. This is now two minutes in. It's not too bad so far. Could be a bit better. You'll definitely see how this can be a lot better by the end of this cast, that's for sure. And there we go, there's Tengen, one of the first casts I received, getting at 2 minutes 42. <laughs> it did say 2.41 for a second, but then it hesitated to say 2.42. So I'm going to go away and load up the next replay, and we'll see how the strategies evolve. And straight away into the second one. This is Red Wings, a top 50 level player. Let's see his take on this. He's using high resources to his um, advantage by deploying machine guns. In fact, the Dushka machine guns. And he's, of course, got defensive tactics. And I saw a lot of people thinking that this might be the best way to establish this. And it is, of course, taking a more advantage of the Feynmanville um, flak emplacements, not quite protecting the headquarters truck pretty much able to get line of sight with his combat engineers whilst the um, AT guns whale on it. You've got three this time, three size doesn't matter bulletins, 3% uh, reload time in total, so 9% and there you go, the truck's getting rapid fire. I'll put that in real time down for you just so you can see how quickly these things fire on it. And so this is Red Wings getting what looks like a pretty decent time. In fact, maybe well beyond to beating Tengen. Indeed, there you go, there's 2 minutes 35. So there you go, there's a bit of an evolution of strategy for you. This time we saw stacked bulletins and we saw um, Soviets. And you'll see that Soviets eventually become dominant. People assumed at the start that OKW might be the way to go, but as you will soon see, Soviets are indeed the best way to establish this strategy. And here we are with the dominant strategy. And the first guy I saw use it was Zuskal, or Himmelkal Hari of Reddit, I think you pronounce his username. And it is indeed using Soviet Reserve Army, or indeed Partisans, and Partisan Tank Hunters. These guys can spawn, obviously with the uh, high resources being designated, you ought to start with two command points so they can spawn pr pretty much straight away. In terms of bulletins, he has got uh, Partisan Recharge 10% faster. 
partisans are three percent harder to hit i'm not sure that's going to matter too much but of course he's got to focus their max um base building here and perhaps if he'd gone against okw it'd be a bit quicker who knows but um this guy is showing the first iteration of this strategy and when i saw it with the time he gets with it i was so impressed so let's go to time four because I, I i just didn't think um, anybody was going to get close to him unless of course somebody else got an idea of his strategy and people started to use it so uh, I'm going to be honest that is pretty much exactly what happened so after this getting a 154 you'll notice a massive jump and I noticed a massive jump in the times I was receiving they went from an average of like 2 minutes 50 to 1 minute 50 so a 1 minute jump just via usage of this um, partisans uh, so here we go without further ado here are the results in joint third place we have Humal Kalhari or Juice Gal or whatever you want to call the guy joint third place with Just Stalin You both getting 148 both receiving Brits as their code in second place Captain Pennysworth who also used the exact same strategy getting Western Front Armies for his good friend Mr. Orlov. I think that's going to be a great way to get him into the game, receiving two factions. And in first place, first place is Tengen. The guy who submitted one of the first games is now here in first place. He took it upon himself to keep iteratively improving the strategy until it got to an incredible level, an incredible time, something we couldn't have even expected. So just notice what uh, bulletins he's got for partners and tank hunters. They're coming out of the woodwork, 10% faster dispatch, 3% harder to hit, and 3% increased accuracy. Not that they have much to worry about in that they're hitting a barn door, but already you've got three partners all, very, all queued to go on the exact same point, just outside the reach of the flak emplacement. And they're raining down hellfire on this command headquarters. Luckily for Tengen, the second truck isn't going into a battle group headquarters. He is able to just keep smashing this command headquarters entirely. And not getting even go times to because we're nearly finished on this replay already. Because obviously if he beats 142, which he does indeed end up doing, such a fantastic uh, thing. He's got five partisans now. The fit so densely compact, if you notice, those Shreks are all on top of each other. It's like a bloody giant Shrek, isn't it? It's like a massive Shrek combining now six other Shreks. And look at this command truck. It's getting shredded. It's taking a little bit longer than you'd expect with six Shreks raining on it. But there you go. 133 and your winner, Reddit Zone, Tengen. And thank you for watching. I'm going to save a couple of codes for next week. Um, because the results were so tight at the top, and because we've definitely got to make sure that Just Stalin for you gets that code to his buddy, because we need more players playing this game, I'll make sure that everybody that got 150 or lower gets a code. And, of course, Tengen, he gets the pick of the crop, having won um, what we're now going to call Rattenkrieg Challenge Episode 3, or what we were previously calling Easy AI Speed Run Challenge and uh, hopefully looking forward to the next challenge I set. It might be something uh, featuring actual players in auto match. We'll have to wait and see. Um, thank you for watching and goodbye.